from your experience in past games, from your competition games, what are some of the pitfalls that this Olympics has to avoid in order to be able to carry out the game safely? Well, I think this games, these games are going to be very different from past games. You know, past games we celebrated together. Uh, there was a lot of gathering, and these games will be very different. Um, so, uh, you know, the testing, the empty stands, this is going to be strange and eerie and jarring. But I think that's what's necessary to have the game safely. You've mentioned in your notes that you experienced some bottlenecks when it came to the Athens Games back in the 2000s. What needs to be done to really uh, not see the same problems in this Olympic? Well, in those games, uh, it w transportation was difficult. We were on very large buses crammed together. And in fact, I was late one day, uh, later than I wanted to be to my venue because I couldn't get a bus. Um, th that is not going to be the way athletes are being transported to the villages. Uh, or to, to the venues from the village. Uh, there will be smaller groups for transportation. You know, we also don't want to see uh, bottlenecks when it comes to the testing results. You don't want to have someone waiting for a testing re test result and end up missing their event. Um, so we need to see those tests come back very quickly. So positive cases within uh, the Olympic kind of bubble was almost certain to happen, right, with so many different countries being involved. How worried are you about this turning into some sort of super spreader event? Well, uh, no one wants to see positive cases, but like you said, uh, this is completely expected. When you have a lot of people and you're testing them all, you're going to come up with positive cases. I think that the measures are, that are in place, um, you know, the rapid testing where you're going to isolate a, a case very quickly and know about it very quickly so they don't have a lot of chance to have a lot of close contacts and transmit the disease, I think that's a key step towards preventing transmission, but also all these other things like masking and the distancing and the prevention of any sort of gathering. In the U.S., we've seen a surge in cases as vaccination levels across certain states plateau, as people just get back to life as normal, right? We see that in the U.K. as well. Does the sort of forging ahead with big events like this give out the message that the world needs to get on with it, the world needs to live with COVID? Well, I think that this, these games will kind of show two different things. One, where we're headed um, as we try to move out of the pandemic, uh, the goal of getting back to normal, but also showing that we're not there yet. The empty stands, uh, the, ch the strangeness of the games, I think should also emphasize that we have a battle to fight still with COVID. And we have to do more to prevent things like this from happening in the future because we do have to prepare for if we have a future pandemic. Tara, how do you expect this very unique COVID situation to affect athletes psychologically? Well, I think some athletes may benefit from it, um, who you know may want to you know focus on their event, not be distracted by the crowd. Um, you know, when I was an athlete, I competed uh, in front of dead silent crowds occasionally, and that was fine with me. Um, but other athletes who do feed off the crowd um, and get more excited and more pumped up um, will probably have a harder time.